Hey everybody, my name is Lars Haar. I've been a commercial river guide for 18 years now, the last 14 of which have been with oars. And uh, I absolutely love my job. So last year was a pretty amazing year for water all throughout the West. And out of that amazing water year, a lot of stories have come out of it. And uh, there's a little story that's one of my personal favorites. It involves uh, me in a dory in Cataract Canyon around, oh, 75,000 cubic feet per second. And uh, it, was, it was big. It was big enough to scare a lot of people. And uh, for whatever reason, we found ourselves down there on a commercial trip. And uh, it's the stuff that I've been waiting for for years. I stayed here in Moab waiting to see that high water, and I finally got my chance. And so there I was in this, uh, this oversized tin can floating downstream with, uh, with a family of four. And uh, we gave them every chance to get out of the boats and into the motor boats, but they said, nope, we're with you guys all the way. So I said, all right, here we go. We untied our bow lines above Big Drop 1, made it through Big Drop 1, and we entered into Big Drop 2. I was the lead boat, and uh, all of a sudden, I found myself on a roller coaster of emotions. And uh, the first emotion was, oh my gosh, we're really doing this. We're really going to pump through this rapid, this amazing high flow. No one else is out here rowing this. It's just us. And then the roller coaster plunged off the backside and I got this horrible sinking feeling because I realized that I was not making my move. And uh, to make the move in Big Drop 2, you really have to be on the far, far right side of the river, almost brushing against the shore. And uh, the dory didn't make it. And we were headed into a little feature we call Little Niagara. And uh, as I dropped down into that, I gave it one hard push and the dory just stood up and we looked at the sky and I thought to myself, wow, this roller coaster is coming out. I'm going to make it over the backside. And then there came that sinking feeling again as we just drifted back down into the pit. And then the dory flipped and we all swam. All's well that ends well. We were all smiling afterwards eating lunch. So when you're down there running big water like that, um, before you push off from shore, there's, there's a lot of stuff going through your mind. But once you untie the bow line, coil it up, stow it away, my favorite technique is just to empty my head. Empty my head and let my body take over, my brain take over, because they know what to do. If I let my emotions get in there, that's just going to get the, the best of me and get in the way of me running a perfectly good line. So what I like to do is just focus, focus, focus on my run. Sometimes I'll close my eyes, take a deep breath, and visualize the rapid from top to bottom. Visualize every feature in that rapid and what I need to do as a boatman to get my boat through those features and into the eddy down below. One of the things I like most about rowing a dory in, in any white water, but especially big white water, is the fact that it can just slice through the biggest wave. A wave that would take a rubber raft and smash it and crush it and knock it sideways, dump, a, dump its occupants into the river, the dory will take that in stride. It was built for that. They were designed to slice through these big waves in the ocean to go out and fish. And uh, we've taken that design to the next level. Now with these decked compartments and uh, beautiful woodworking I think I think the dory is the ultimate craft for big water so I grew up as a kid checking out the night sky and and uh, my dad was into nature and everything else and he wanted to teach me what he could so I learned a few of the basics I learned the big dipper I learned the little dipper um, Orion in the winter time um, but then as I got older and spent more time outside especially guiding out here in the multi-day scene um, spending over a hundred nights a year out under the stars I wanted to be able to, to do more and see more and be able to identify these patterns in the sky and be able to look up and and you know, see familiar friends rather than just random clusters of light. Some of it is so baffling and you, and you just realize how small we really are. You look up there and you see literally thousands of stars and, and yet every star we can see from here is in our galaxy. It's in the Milky Way galaxy. And that's just one galaxy out of, out of the thousands and thousands of galaxies that are out there. And every single one of those thousands of galaxies has as many stars as we can see here from, from here on Earth. The, that just blows me away every time I sit back and look up at the night sky.